not bad, but any coffee is better than no coffee, you know? Good morning. It is a Monday morning. Hope you had a great weekend, and I have a bad habit of touching my face and scratching and all this stuff. Every time I do a video, I'm like, why? Why? Stop. <laughs> but I just, I just can't. All right. Anyway, good morning. It is a Monday morning, and uh, today I uh, am going to be, uh, you know, I, it looks like I found a uh, kindred spirit uh, on uh, in Lydia Sweat on success.com because uh, there's so many of her articles that I like. She puts together such great quotes that uh, they work every single time for me uh, when I'm looking for a specific thing like today. You're going to be talking about uh, uh, a better life, right? It's quotes, wise quotes for a better life. I'm only going to do half today because uh, they're 19. So I'm like, that's a bit too many. So I think I'm going to go with the first, uh, I don't know, uh, nine and a half. I don't know. I'll, I'll go with the first nine. I'll probably do the, the second half on uh, Wednesday. So part one of wise quotes for a better life. Let's get started. Here we go. The article starts like this, wisdom is a great source of power. It's through others' stories of failure and success that we learn the most. It's through their experiences of things we have yet to witness that feeds us the knowledge we need to fly high, to build upon what we already know. There's little in life, there is little in life that a wise mind can't conquer, and it's the sage-like guidance that inspires us to make our life that much better. So here's some insightful quotes from people who lived exceptional lives. So here we go. All right, let's start this off here. First one, Eleanor Roosevelt. This one is really good. This quote is, is great. I've actually heard it in different um, forms throughout my life. It says, no, nobody can make you feel inferior without your permission. Think about that. No one can make you feel inferior without your permission. You've got to give them power over your feelings to allow them to make you feel small. If you, if, if their, uh, I don't know, opinion doesn't matter to you, if they have zero impact in your life, they can't make you feel inferior, right? You can't, you, if you don't give them permission, they can't make you feel any other way. You, when you know somebody, when you love somebody and they build you up and you can't wait to hear their words, to, to, to feel that, uh, you know, that, uh, that build up, right? You're giving them power. You're giving them permission to make you feel better. Conversely, nobody can make you feel inferior without your permission. Stop giving people who don't matter permission to make you feel inferior. Simple. Stop giving people permission to make you feel inferior. As a matter of fact, my former um, uh, radio co-host, Sonny, would, would tell me that. Says, my dad used to tell me, he said, nobody can make you feel bad. Only if you let them. And uh, something to that effect, right? So I've heard this before. And it is such a powerful statement, you know? It is a powerful insight into the human condition where, where the majority of us, the majority of us are creatures of emotion. I mean, sure, there's intellect and all that stuff, right? But creatures of emotion. If, if you are, have you ever seen somebody on a high you know where they're just like walking on sunshine they're doing that you know top of the world type of thing and somebody says a little something and just knocks them off their you know off their high now was it on purpose a lot of times yes you know not all the time but there are people who don't like to see somebody you know a beautiful balloon of positivity because they'll be like because they don't feel it. They allowed somebody else made them feel, make them feel inferior. Or they're going through something terrible and they don't know how to um, address it and they lash out. And they try and bring other people down because they're not 
feeling it, you know? And it's, you know, then there's the psych outs too, like uh, the infamous one of Arnold Schwarzenegger and Lou Ferrigno, or I think it was, wait, was Lou Ferrigno? I don't know. But uh, he, they were competing and he psyched him out. Arnold Schwarzenegger psyched him out. And that's how he was mentally able to, to compete and um, be victorious over his competition, right? So nobody can make you feel inferior without your permission. Look for people that make you feel better. This quote was Eleanor Roosevelt. Next, Edmund Burke. You can never plan the future by the past. It's like, um, what is it at? Previous results don't represent future, you know, results, whatever. Past performance doesn't indicate future performance or something like that, right? You can never plan the future by the past. And uh, this quote seems familiar. I think we've had it in, in another article. But basically, it's like, don't allow, I think. It's like, don't allow your future to be dictated by your past if there's something in your past that is weighing heavily on you or shaped you or made you feel negative. If there's some, don't get me wrong, there's some people who with, with terrible things in their past that take that past and that trauma or that incident and make it their fuel for the future. So it may not plan their future, but it fuels their future. It allows them to overcome a, at you know adversity that some people never would never want to face, but they've already been through so much that this whatever they may you know try to stop them in the future it doesn't have a chance because they're using that fuel. You can never plan the future by the past. Edmund Burke, Heidrich Nietzsche probably slaughtered that pronunciation as well and I apologize he who has a why to live can bear almost any how again <clears throat> the why and the how right in life if you want more success if you want a better life if you want a different life you have to visualize internalize and maximize your why the why has to be so massive it has to be either you know make you cry when you think about it the payout is just so massive that the how is going to figure it out and those hows that you have, have to figure out may be obstacles may be painful lessons maybe you know other things you have to go through that are difficult that you can bear them if you have your why it's that will to live right he who has a why to live can bear almost any how. Friedrich Nietzsche. It's a Monday. What can I say, right? We're going to get through this together and start off with a smile. Dalai Lama, take into account that great love and great achievements involve great risk. Ooh. Risk and love? What? Of course you need to take risk <clears throat> look I can only speak as the um, uh, my own experience right I don't know how it is for anybody else but that first um, chasm you have to broach <laughs> when, when you're trying to reach love is very scary very difficult and very intimidating you know when you see somebody you're attracted to and you're like, you feel something, right? You feel that pull, that magnetism, right? It's like something's drawing me towards this person. And it's happened. It happens sometimes to people once in their lifetime, sometimes many times. I don't know. I can only speak with my uh, personal experience, right? And when you feel that, you're like, okay, should I? <laughs> you know, uh, and who am I to think I can speak to that person or who am I, you know, and that's all self-talk, right? So if you, we have a low self-esteem, we have negative self-talk. We're not going to be able to make that jump. We're not going to be able to take that step. 
what's lying on the other side of that first step. Take into account that great love and great achievements involve great risk. It's not like we're running into a building, you know, being shot at or whatever. Sometimes it feels that way with a fear that we feel trying to take that first step to a new job or to a new relationship or or just a new you. It's like sometimes, and I've spoken to people about this, they visualize themselves as someone else, not an entirely different person, but them being more confident, being whatever it is. They picture themselves differently than who they are now. And that first step, it's so difficult. There's risks, right? In living your life a certain way and becoming a certain person, the risk is in being comfortable or uncomfortably comfortable in the in your skin, meaning it's all I know. So I'll just go with it. That's uncomfortably comfortable, right? Because it's not that you enjoy being how you are or you feel that's the best you you can be. It's just that that's who you know how to be. You don't particularly care for it. So you're uncomfortably comfortable in your own skin. And it's difficult to try and kind of rip out of that, you know, and, and try and become a, a different person. That's why sometimes people move into other cities, you know. They move to other communities just to become a new person. It's like here nobody knows me. I don't have to be who I was. I can become a new person. I can be whoever I want. And those the big cities, it's the biggest, you know, largest destination. People go to New York or Los Angeles or whatever to be somebody completely different than who they uh, people perceive them to be or have expectations of them to be. We put people in boxes. Oh, he, that, that person, he's this. Oh, that girl, she's that. And it's sad, right, that we, we do that, and it's sad that people do it to us. So you have that, that uncomfortably com comfortable keeps you from doing it. And the other one is just fear. Fear of something new. Fear of putting yourself out there. Fear of falling. You know, it doesn't matter how many times you fall. How many times you get up. Take into account that great love and great achievements involve great risk. Dalai Lama. Benjamin Franklin, lost time is never found again. Golly, man. If Benjamin Franklin was saying that then, imagine now. Man. It's uh, frustrating sometimes when you see people getting so many things done and you're sitting here going like, where did today go? Where did this past week go? Where did these past nine months of the pandemic go and I haven't done anything? Anything to better my life or anything to change something for the better. Lost time is never found again. But we're encouraged. We're encouraged to lose time. We're encouraged to just, uh, you know how they do it with the money, right? We're making it rain. Or I saw somebody had like a gun where it shoots out money. I'm like, I don't know if that is that is that monopoly money cuz my paycheck's not going to that right <laughs> but we seem to do that with time and time is the most valuable thing of all and if you think otherwise you're wrong you're wrong because ask yourself this do you have a job and if you do how much do you get paid well i'm making 20 dollars an hour Okay, so one hour of your time is $20. That's the value you're giving for that time. But what about time with a loved one? The time with someone whose life is slipping away? Time with, with someone whose life is, is literally ebbing away in front of your eyes. How valuable is that time? How valuable is that moment that you're sharing with them? Speak to anybody who's lost a loved one be it at an old old age or someone at a very young age 
ask them, what would you give for one more moment with that person? Someone they loved, you know, massively. What would you give for just one more moment? And that is when you realize the value of time. We don't value time as much as we need to. Lost time is never found again. Benjamin Franklin. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, he says, He that respects himself is safe from others. See, that's now that's self-talk, right? Self-talk. When you realize the value of yourself, we're talking about the value of time, value. How about your own personal value? If you devalue yourself, you will allow others to step all over you and devalue you beyond anything you ever imagined. Then it goes back to the very, very first quote, right? No one can make you feel, what was it? No one can make you feel inferior without your permission. It all goes back. That's self-talk, right? He that respects himself is safe from others. Why? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they say. Sometimes, yeah, you might feel a, you might feel a, a, a twinge. Something makes you upset because if somebody, something somebody said or did or, ma you know, machinated against you, uh, worked against you. And I've felt it, man, you know. I've felt it in my life. Sure, you have too. Even from people who, who you thought were your friends. But ultimately, if you respect yourself, you're going to overcome it. You're going to bounce back from it, right? You're, you're going to come back from whatever it is that you face. There's nothing more important than your self-talk and your perseverance to overcome whatever you face. Your decision, you decide that no matter what you face, you're going to overcome it. And it's difficult. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's possible. It's doable. But again, it first starts with self-talk. How do you talk to yourself about who you are and what you can handle and your value in this world? You are valuable. You offer something that no one else offers in this world. You may not see it. Others see it in you. And even if others don't see it, you have to see it in yourself. Shine your light so that, so that others can see it. Know your value. Know your worth. Know you're special. Know you belong. And know you are needed and appreciated. He that respects himself is safe from others. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Common sense is genius. Dressed in working clothes yeah it's like you, you how many people say you have no common sense what does that mean say so you just you you know that's wrong you know that's right you know this you know it's common sense we i don't know if we can teach common sense to anybody you can show common sense when you see a lack of common sense is when it's kind of jarring you know you're like, how? Why? What? I don't get it. And I think usually that's more if you have a sense of common sense. That you see other people not displaying it. And you're like, what? What? How? What? How? Why? But it is what it is. Common sense is genius dressed in its working clothes. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Robert Frost, in three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. Massive lesson coming in a, a bit. Super powerful. In three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. Life goes on. How many quotes can you think of that this particular quote goes hand in hand with? Meshes perfectly like a machine, like a cog, you know what I mean? 
How many quotes does it goes on mesh with, you know? It's like, the first one I think of is, this too shall pass, right? It goes hand in hand, perfectly. Life goes on. Goes back to being able to persevere. Don't think that whatever happens to you in a negative way is a defining moment in your life that you, that you will not be able to move from. We've seen example after example after example of people overcoming so much, whether it's personal tragedy or being a prisoner of war. There's make movies about them. They write books about them. So what we as a regular person who kind of lives a fairly unremarkable life, it's just that when something uncomfortable happens to us, it's magnified because we haven't faced something massive, right? It's magnified because it's what we're dealing with right now, especially if our life is, you know, very chill, very, you know, non, you know, non-intrusive, non, not very exciting, right? And then something happens. Yeah, it's like an explosion. So it seems magnified to us. But life goes on. Forests burn. New life springs up. Life goes on. There's an end, I imagine, at some point, right? Right now we, we live in the moment, and I think it's important to live in the moment. You can't be all negative, you know. It's going to end, right? But this is a very powerful message. In three words, I can sum up everything I've learned about life. It goes on. It goes on. Robert Frost. Last one for today. I'm doing a short one today. Because it's splitting. This is part one of two parts for the wise quotes for a better life. Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr. It is the province of knowledge to speak. And it is the privilege of wisdom to listen. There's a lot of us who talk a lot. But you also have to know how to listen. And I, and I feel I have done that. And I feel I will continue to do that. Because I'm not wise. I'm in the process of becoming wiser than I am now. And that's all you'll ever do. You're never going to be completely wise. It's, the, it's a road we're traveling. Now... If you don't listen, you're going to kind of be stuck at a certain level of wisdom. Life changes. Life goes on. Situations change. Everything changes. Technology changes every so, so many years, right? And within those years, technology changes and grows and all that. So the world itself is changing. Different knowledge is now available to us. Different wisdoms to be imparted are now available to us. That's why there's always new books and new speakers and, you know, new experiences. It is the province of knowledge to speak and it is the privilege of wisdom to listen. Do you have knowledge to share? How did you overcome something in your life? Do you realize that there are, I would venture, tens of millions of stories of people finding something deep within themselves to overcome something that many will never, ever, ever hear? We'll never hear them. Stories of survival that we will never hear. Your story of overcoming something. That unless you share it, unless you listen to this and realize that it is the province of knowledge to speak, we'll never hear your story. No one will ever know. And it's valuable. It's valuable for the wisdom of people. Many, many of the lessons, the timeless lessons we know are because people lived through something and imparted their knowledge on someone else and got that message out. 
and share these words of the human experience. Why do people, why do uh, collections of quotes exist? Because we as a, as a human people need to share the experience and learn. I may not go through what somebody else went through. But in some way, shape or form, I may be able to utilize that thought, that quote in something in my life to help me get past something or get me to be able to achieve something beyond whatever I ever thought I'd be able to achieve. Motivational videos, motivational speakers, motivational texts. They're all there for a reason. There's a need in humanity. We need both motivation. We need comfort. We need healing. When we're broken, we need a hand up when we're down. There's a need. That's why there's a whole industry of speakers and texts and videos and all that. There's a whole industry. Your story is powerful to someone else. You just don't know it. And many stories will never be shared because of that. Uh, who am I? Who am I? Who cares what happened to me? Who, who, would, who would care about what happened to me? We don't know. And it's not up to us to decide to keep it from the world. Just because. It's because of our self-talk. Make, making us believe that we are insignificant. Your story matters. Every life lived, every obstacle overcome is, is an inst you know, another part of the instruction manual on how to live, how to survive, how to live a better life. This is part one of Wise Quotes for a Better Life. I'm going to do part two on Wednesday. And this is a fitting place to end part one. It is the province of knowledge to speak. And it is the privilege of wisdom to listen. Two ears, one mouth. Listen twice as much as you speak. <laughs> First time I heard that, I'm like, that's, that's funny. <laughs> but <laughs> very true, right? So yeah, I talk a lot. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 8 a.m. right here. I speak a lot. I've done podcasts. I did radio for so many years. I also like to listen to people. I, I love to listen to people and see if I can get some information from them, download it into my human computer and make better decisions, live a better life, become a better man, become a better member of, of society. I'm, you know, I'm a flawed human being just like everyone else made mistakes I've hurt people you know whether intentionally or unintentionally I'm sure emotionally you know whatever and I feel bad about that but I want to become better because I'm not I'm not perfect you know and I will never be perfect and I'm sure I'll mess up again but at least I'm trying trying to become a better person that's all we can do without trying you're not going to get anywhere it is a province of knowledge to speak and it is a privilege of wisdom to listen Oliver Wendell Holmes Sr. that is the end of the first half of the wise quotes for a better life on this Monday I hope you have a wonderful week and I hope you join me on Wednesday at 8 a.m. for the second half of this article I'm sure there's going to be some more great great quotes and if you can I'd, I'd appreciate it if you share this video as well share it and uh, hopefully our experiences can help other people in the future as well 
So that'll do it for this Monday morning, December the 14th. Hope you have a wonderful day. And until the next time, we'll be talking.